used when I first came to EU. Because I was questioning God why was I late here because I thought that was my answers to my prayers. But then when I got here, um, I was disappointed <laughs> and I was questioning God and even complaining why he laid me here in the first place. And this week of prayer really answered my questions because as we went through the message that we heard and the songs and everything that happened in the last week really, really reminded me of my purpose and God showed me why he laid me here. And yes, it's for education, but in a bigger picture, he laid me here to go through my own healing journey. It started a long way back, but I thought I had moved on. Um, I thought I was okay, but this last week really showed me how God um, takes us into different phases and healing actually happens in stages. See, when I lost my dad, when I was really young, I didn't really realize the magnitude and the effect it would have in my life because it distorted the way I see God and I couldn't really comprehend how someone would just love me um, without having to work for it um, and someone who would just uh, accept me the way I am. So I kept, um, and when he passed away, I had this huge void in my heart. I tried filling in with friendships or looking for a romantic partner, sometimes being that perfect student in class just so that you could be validated by the teachers. But I didn't realize that this was all temporary solutions for my issues. And then God had to bring me to a point where he showed me that I cannot do this life by myself and I need his strength and I need his grace. That's when I started relying on him. That's how my personal relationship with him began. But this last week showed me how I have to go through another stage of acceptance and also realizing God's power in my own life. You see, I always um, have been this person who, um, you know, had these big dreams and big goals in my life, but I didn't realize that God's plans and God's dream is the one that sustains in the long run. And that's why he led me here to AUP. And I'm very truly blessed and very grateful because um, this throughout the week of prayer, it really brought back the passion that I had got for God and also reminded me of my purpose to serve, not just for myself, but to others. Um, and I feel like our brokenness um, and the ugly stuff that we have in our lives, it's there for a reason, so that God can walk through them to bring healing to people around us. It's not just for us, but essentially it's for others so that God could be glorified. Now, as I go to my week and my um, journey here in AUP, I've been blessed um, as through my brokenness, I can connect with so many individuals who unfortunately have to share the same story, but fortunately, through the relationships and connections, God brought relational healing in my life. And I am so grateful for that and very, very blessed to all the friends who saw me, who shared this story with me, who cried with me, who trusted me, who made me see, feel seen and known, and who accepted me despite my brokenness. I felt God's love through them. Now I also feel God's love the day when my dad took his last breath. I also see God's love when he allowed everything to just crumble down and I was crying and pleading God to fix everything, but he didn't. I still see God's love because now as I look back, I see how he walked through it, how he let everything to fall apart so that he can bring everything in a better position than I had ever imagined and I had ever hoped. That's how powerful God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy is. 
During my grief journey, I felt really alone and isolated. I felt like no one would understand my pain. I thought I'm the only one with this unique experience. But um, that's not how life works. There's so many people struggling. And if you look at the world now, there's so much brokenness. And it really, really breaks my heart to see people suffer. And when we truly, but the good part is, Regardless, yes, there is brokenness, yes, there is sin. The good part is we can partnership with God to bring restoration. And how that works is when we give our own brokenness to God so that he can walk through them, so that he can use them for his purpose and his glorification. What I have learned in my journey so far, just like Paul mentioned in Philippians, is that to leave... Um, is in vain, but to die is for Christ. God has brought so much joy in my life, despite the sufferings that I have gone through. He, he allowed me to go to the rock bottom so that I can re realize and truly experience that he is the rock. He is the only stable thing that's in our life, and he's the only thing that can truly satisfy the void that we have in our hearts. So friends, I don't know what you may be struggling with, and loss comes in all different forms. Um, it may not be losing your parent. It may also be sometimes losing a friendship, um, losing something that is so precious and so close to your heart that you find it really hard to continue moving on. But on times like this, God is still there. And even though you feel unlovable, God's grace and God's unconditional, unconditional love truly, truly um, makes you feel seen. And during those times, I really hope you allow God to come into so that you can experience how he originally intended when he created all of us to live in peace and harmony with other people while being in relationship with God. That's what we are truly made for. And that's our purpose here in earth, to pour out into the lives of others. And we can only do that when we first allow God to work in our lives and when we trust God with our broken pieces and let go of everything that's holding us down. Thank you everyone for listening. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> I just feel uh, nervous. So, happy AY. God is good. All the time. So, this, more, uh, this afternoon, so I just have a script for my short testimony or experience. So, this testimony is, I count as a privilege for me. And I praise God because it is my first time not to stand here in PIC, but it's my first time to share my testimony a lot of people with English speaking. And so, I hope you bless this my short testimony. And before I share my testimony of how I bless this week of prayer, Allow me to share my testimony before the week of prayer, how I experienced struggle, how I experienced brokenness in my life. So, um, I just started when uh, I woke up three or at 3 a.m. in the morning last Friday, October 14, 2022. And... When I check my phone, the battery is already 30%. And also, I told myself that I need to charge it. And after I charge my cell phone, I go back to my bed. 
And then I'm so restless. And I took again my cell phone to transfer in my power bank. But I'm also still restless, my friends. I don't know why. I don't know what reason. But, you know, friends, I turned on my cell phone and Wi-Fi, and then I checked the messages. I, I have a lot of messages in my messengers. Daming kachat ba? So, but one message caught my attention during the time early in the morning. My message, uh, my order, my order, uh, older brother messaged me or chat me, says in Tagalog, Doy, because my kuya called me Doy. Says there that, tibayan mo lang ang loob mo, si kuya wala na. So when I read that message, my friends, I don't know what I can to do. Hindi ko po alam yung aking gagawin. Because my, brad, my older brother already passed away last October 14, 2022. During the time, that is my first experience na I'm so sad. And also, my friends, After I read that message, I kneeled and prayed and said, Lord, it will be done. Not it will be done na namatay si Kuya, but it will be done what is the purpose of God in my life. So after that, my friends, after that experience, I cried quietly so that my roommates could not hear. Yung tipong luha lang yung tumutulo, walang sounds, no? silent, naka-airplane naka -airplane mode. In a long make story, uh, in the long story, uh, in the long make story short, I had pain in my heart. I felt always in smile, hide in the people na lagi ko pong nakikita. And they greet them, kuya, hi, and then I smile, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello. So, friends, I felt and I, felt and I always smiled. The people I meet, but I, what I experienced was so heavy and I wanted to cry. I wanted to, yung mayroon ako mapagsabihan. But I held back my tears so that others would see the problem I had. I know most of people na nakakilala po sa akin, kilala po ako, I'm happy person. Kilala po ako na laging nagpapatawa. Sa mukha pa lang nakakatawa na. So, lagi pong nakakatawa. So, I'm always wearing a smile and seems to have no problem in my life. Until this week, a prayer came. I was still crying. I was, I was, I was still caring the sadness and disappointment in my life. But I praise God, my friend, when I heard the messages on Monday morning and evening. It's all about creation. It's all about what life uh, come to be and what is our identity. You know, friends, When I heard that message, I cry and ask God. I ask, Lord, where my life is headed despite that fact that I have experienced life's trial. And after that uh, message I heard, I prayed and cried again. 
And then after I cried, my sister called me. Or my sister called me. He say, uh, she said, pet, don't be sad. Uh, pet, don't be sad there. If you want to go home, Uh, if you want to go home, we will send you money to buy ticket and book it so that you are, can reduce your sadness there and lighten your feelings. Nung sinabi ng akin pong kapatid, when my sister said that, I'm just thinking if I go home to Palawan because my province is in Palawan, the only province because they are only one, Palawan. So, my friends, I was confused if I will go, if I will go or not. And when I came Tuesday morning, I was sitting there. And I heard the message is purpose. What is our purpose? And then, friends, after I heard that message, I asked God, I asked myself, why I am here? Ba't nga ba ako nandito? Para umiyak? You know, friends, and came to the point that, Lord, what is your purpose? Why did you take my brother's life? I ask God, Lord, what is your purpose? Why my brothers? But mo siya kinuha. And also, despite that the fact that what happened in our family, that happened in my life, my friends, I was continue to praise God. Even though it's so hurt, even though it's so painful, I will praise God. God that time. And this week of prayer has had an hajj in pack of my life. This pack, uh, despite of the fact that I have experienced trials and disappointment, but I continue to see God's love, to see His grace in my life. I'm so blessed this week of prayer starting Monday until last message of Brother Abraham. I'm so blessed, my friend. Despite the trials and challenges I'm going through, I have learned that there is hope. Remember the message of Brother Nino? The hope that we have hope behind what the problem that we had there is hope. Friends, I learned that there's hope beyond what my struggle I had. And also, always remember that we turn to the Lord. That we turn and approach the Lord who is the owner of love. And this afternoon before I end, before I leaving my position, I position talaga, no? <laughs> my uh, testimony. I just want to read the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. I know you are familiar this verse. God is inviting for us, my friends. I know every one of us here have any experience, any testimony, struggle that they are experienced, but God is inviting for us. Jesus said, Come unto me. All ye have, he have heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And also, in Hebrew chapter 10, verse 23, says there, my friends, let us hold fast the, the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. May the Lord God bless us all.
A blessed afternoon, everyone. My name is Alaysa Dito Malden from College of Nursing, third year. Let me share you today my testimony and how God spoke to me to come forward and receive His unconditional love. <sighs> when I got here in AUP, my sister was preparing to go into clerkship in Batangas and Manila Adventist Med. So basically, the four of us, me, my father, my mom, and my sister, are in different places. As a person who gains and finds strength from the people I love, I relate, I relate a lot to Ate Zina's, Zina's story yesterday in the AM service. I relate a lot to Ate Zina's story yesterday in the AM service. For me, it was a great struggle knowing and being away from my family. Especially because this, is, this was not the first time na magkakalayo kami. It was like childhood all over again. Except, layo-layo talaga kami this time. Hindi kami by twos. I felt lonely. I felt brokenhearted. But I wasn't praying to God about it that time. You know, I can't remember the last time I prayed to God personally, but lately I was craving for my family's hugs and laughter. I missed our heart-to-heart -heart conversations. My parents, despite being imperfect, they do their best to fill us with their advices and with their love. Then, months passed. From feeling lonely and brokenhearted, I felt very fragile and vulnerable. Hindi makakain ng maayos, pagising-gising sa gabi, hindi makapag-focus. But when I attended the Friday AM service, I heard Ate Zina's sermon. Then sabi ko, Lord, you know why I am here. You know my heart. And you know my purpose. Strengthen me. Patatagin niyo po ako. You know, I am a very introverted person. That's why I relate so much to Ate Zina's story. But yesterday, at that moment, God spoke to me with a voice and a few words, lumapit ka. And nagsalita din si Ate Zina, love is not ashamed. That gave me the confidence to move forward and surrender to him. And that was the first time I prayed in my own words. 
I uttered words that I really wanted to say to God. In my simplest words, I told God, Lord, pagod na ako. Ang daming inconsistency sa spiritual life ko. Namimiss ko na po yung pamilya ko. Patatagin niyo po ako. After that prayer and the baptism, I felt joy and peace. I felt whole again. I realized that the only thing I was needing for the past months can only be found in Him. Hello? 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 Can I be heard? There we go. All right. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, AUP. God is good. And all the time, praise God. So, as you guys can see, uh, my name is John Christian Iglesia, but you guys can call me Ian for short. I am a BS MLS student, first year, and I would like to start off my testimony by sharing with you Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 and 11. It says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Today, God has answered a prayer that I have been yearning for the longest time. Today, I have finally had the courage to surrender my life to God and accepted Him as my personal Savior through baptism. This decision of mine had been in the works for quite some time. I must confess that although I was born and raised in an Adventist home, I never actually had a personal relationship with Jesus until just recently when I started studying here at AUP. Back then, I simply just followed the doctrines of the church without fully understanding why we follow them. Because of that, I have to be honest that I also initially saw God as a God of punishment when in fact, He is a God of love and that He is supposed to be my best friend. In the past, especially during the pandemic, I have attended numerous evangelistic efforts, or crusades, if you will. And every time that they would be appealing for baptism towards the end of the, um, towards the, end of the crusade, I would often have the desire to be baptized, but eventually it, it would immediately go away. I was held back because I eventually realized that something was missing. I then realized that it probably was because I did not open my heart to him enough and that I did not have enough faith. We all know that God works in mysterious ways, right? Amen? Sometimes we don't know that he has been silently working through us. Sometimes he would take us by surprise by giving us things before we could even ask him for it. At that point, I was reminded of two things about faith. First, faith, as defined by the dictionary, is the belief in things unseen. And faith without works is dead. From that time on, I told myself that something has to happen. If I love God, I must fully yearn for Him. I must fully open my heart to Him and surrender my life to Him. If I want to know more about Him, I should seek Him. Seek, and ye shall find. Fast forward to the recent present. My, my first most vivid experience of God's work in my life was towards the end of my senior year of high school when I was applying for college. Of course, AUP was already uh, what I was aiming for. But since I can be very skeptical, as us humans can be, we can overthink a lot, I felt that I needed to apply for another university. And my parents suggested that I also apply for the University of the Philippines. Pretty high, right? But 
um, since we were also indecisive about this, and since we both know my capabilities, we have decided to let the Lord choose for us. So our um, sign was, Kusan ako una papasa. Dun ako gusto dalhin ng Panginoon because I believe that He has a plan for me. And praise God, sa AUP lang po ako nakapasa. It truly shows that God has a plan for me here. Um, for you guys must know, before coming here to AUP, I studied in secular schools in the last 10 years. And I have felt different being usually I was only I was the only Adventist in the schools that I've been to and it was hard to defend your faith and since I did not go to an Adventist school I did not know no I did not know much about the doctrines that it became hard for me in some way to defend my faith but I saw that when God made me apply here in AUP I knew why he wanted me to have a deeper relationship with him. He wanted me to have friends who would truly inspire me in faith. He wanted me to be happy. And that was just the beginning. In the succeeding days and weeks, God has surprised me numerous times. He sent me people, my friends, who truly make me happy every day and have inspired me to have deeper faith in God. When I was applying to my dormitory in Mahogany Residence Hall, I was shocked to find out that our dean, our home dean, was Pastor Elmer Lagarile, who happened to be the brother of my mom's sponsor during their wedding. And I was also shocked to find out that our dorm chaplain was Pastor Kenneth Patilan, na pinapanood ko lang noon sa YouTube because PIC was our pandemic church. It truly showed that God was providing for me without me even knowing. He provided me these two people. He provided me these friends who would surely show God's direction for my life. There are a lot of surprises that I would like to mention, but of course, for sure, uwing uwing na pong lahat. <laughs> but aside from the surprises, of course, I have also encountered trials. Last August, I was supposed to go home to Batangas for the long weekend, but instead, I ended up testing positive for COVID-19. And I had no option but to be isolated at the university facility, which was just at the back of this church. Of course, it felt scary. I felt helpless because it was unexpected. I was panicking because this is the first time that I tested positive for COVID. I didn't know what to do. But then, God showed me hope that weekend. He showed me hope while I was in that isolation room. The first day I was isolated was a Friday. And on my first night, I watched the Vesper service here at PIC online. A classmate of mine who was assigned to render a song sang In Christ Alone. As I listened and sang along, I was moved to tears. By faith, I have realized that God was sending me a message that night, that he is my source of strength and my source of hope. And by God's grace, I conquered COVID and walked out of that isolation room five days later, a fighter. Amen? From that time on, in all the challenges that I faced as a student, as a student of the Medical Laboratory Science Department, I surrendered my cares to God. I surrendered my studies, my tasks, everything. And praise Him, He took care of me and gave me strength. His promises in Philippians 4.13, proved true. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I would have never been able to conquer the hurdles in my life if it weren't for him. This week of prayer made me reflect on the blessings God had showered upon me throughout this last year. Indeed, God shown me through his speakers this week about his faithfulness and mercy in my life. Perhaps the sermon that really struck me the most was Ate Martina's sermon about forgiveness. When she mentioned about the parable of the sheep, when God didn't mind leaving the 99 sheep that he had in the herd just to look for the missing one, I saw myself as the missing sheep. I felt that I have strayed away from God because I thought that 
I could not feel him. But praise God for his mercy because no matter how far I strayed away from him, he welcomed me back into his arms. Indeed, Romans 6, 23, for nothing can separate us from the love of God. I truly felt God's love for me as throughout my stay here at AUP and his desire for me to officially be in his kingdom has been calling me. And today, I heeded to that call and made that public declaration in front of people who have been so dear to me. As I conclude, friends, there may be some of you who have not made that decision yet for God. There may be some of you who have felt that there are still questions that are unanswered. There may be some of you who may not even have that personal relationship with the Lord yet. And you guys might think that that could be the factor that may be hindering you back. But what I can say is, open your heart to the Lord. Seek for him, and you will find him. He will take you by surprise. Indeed, this day has been unforgettable, and I praise God because he truly answered my prayer today. Thank you. Happy Shabbat, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah. I'm Marie Caramientas, a sinner saved by grace. Once was lost, but now I found. I'm from in College of Nursing. I was being rebaptized because of the impression of the Holy Spirit. I was only 11 years old when I first been baptized. But I did not totally knew Jesus, but rather, I decided to be baptized that time to be a Seventh-day Adventist, but not only, but not totally knowing Jesus. As years goes by, my faith failed because there was no foundation of Christ. I got lost by Satan's multiple temptations and attacks. I go to church actively participating in different ministries but don't have Christ in my life. There was a time that I cannot go to church anymore and just pursuing worldly things. But because Jesus loves me dearly, he allows me to experience brokenness in my life. Then the Lord made me realize that without Him, I cannot do nothing. I can do nothing. The turning point of my Christian life happened from 2019 up to present, wherein the Holy Spirit uses people and His ministries in the youth department and prayer network in SSD to encounter Jesus more. Last Wednesday night, Jesus impressed my heart to go back to him through baptism. I cried for joy because at last, the Lord gave me the opportunity to be baptized for Jesus and not for religion or doctrine. I really praise God for this opportunity to be rebaptized for Jesus. Now, it's more clear to me the essence of baptism. It is more clear to me the presence of Jesus in my life and giving serving to Him. And with this, I fully commit surrender to Jesus, my studies, future profession, my future life, my future married life, and for the life to come. Before I sit down, I just want to share my favorite Bible verse found in Psalms 
chapter 37, verse 4. It says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Thank you, everyone, and this is my prayer for this afternoon.
Happy Sabbath. I believe we have all been blessed by the testimonies we've heard this afternoon. And I can without a doubt say that God is still at work here at AUP. God is at work in our lives individually, even before the week of prayer, as we have heard a while ago. And God is at work through the week of prayer and the messages we have heard together this past week. My task this afternoon is just to wrap up uh, the testimonies. I will share a little, a few thoughts with you and maybe look forward to the future and what comes next after the week of prayer. As we've heard from the testimonies, we can see clearly that God works in a personal level. God calls people through different circumstances, through the challenges they face. God works with them in their challenges and their struggles. And God uses student speakers to encourage, strengthen, and give hope to the people of AUP. I am giving it a little bit ahead because we are going to thank our speakers in a little bit. But I have been personally impressed by the quality of messages we have heard from our speakers. And I think you have been blessed yourselves, amen? By what you have heard through them. Our theme this past week was origins. And our goal was to help each worshiper, each listener, have a deeper understanding of your origin. Because as has been mentioned again and again in our past, in the messages we've heard, once you learn where you come from, you have a better sense of who you are, you have a better sense of where you are going. And our goal this past week was to give you a big picture, to paint you uh, a picture, a scenery, uh, a, a landscape of different ideas, concepts, different beliefs that shape who you are based on where you come from. And we hope that as you've listened to the messages, you've developed uh, what pastors like to call a worldview, a big picture. You have a better sense of what your purpose is, your identity is, how you deal with certain struggles and issues, and how you can face the future with hope and anticipation and a sense that God is with you. We hope these messages have really encouraged you and given you that sense of who you are and strengthen your identity and purpose in life. I'd like to read to you a verse from the Bible that's found in Romans chapter 15. Romans 15, verse 4. And here's what it says from the New Living Translation. Such things were written in the scripture, Scriptures long ago to teach us. And the Scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. All the messages you've heard this past week come from scriptures, scriptures that were written long ago that teach us our origins. And we hope that you take these messages to heart. You take the scriptures to heart because once you do so, and we've seen from our testimonies, if you really take these messages to heart, wrap them around uh, and uh, wrap them tightly around your heart. Keep them in mind constantly. Use them as the foundation of your beliefs, the foundation of how you approach life, the foundation of your decision-making, the foundation of your priorities. If, if you use these messages as the foundation of who you are, based on the scriptures, the verse tells us, then if you do that, you will have hope and encouragement as you wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. The testimonies we've heard this afternoon mention struggles and challenges, and I'm sure you all have your own struggles and challenges. You all have our ups and downs in life. And they're sad to say, if you look to the future, there will be more to come. We cannot avoid it. We cannot uh, pretend it will not happen. All of us, in the future, in the days to come, the years to come, we will experience struggles and challenges. What do we do when they come? How do we handle it when pain and stress and grief and sorrow threaten to overwhelm us? What happens the next time 
you don't know what to do. What happens the next time when darkness threatens to overwhelm you? I challenge you, dear students and faculty and staff who are here, the next time those struggles come, remember origins. Remember who you are. Remember who God created you to be. Remember God's purpose for your life and how He's still at work in you and through you even until this day, until eternity. Take these messages to heart. And if you do so, remember your origins when those difficult times come. These messages will give you hope and encouragement as you wait for God's promises to be fulfilled. I challenge you, dear students, as we look to the future, never forget where you come from. Never forget the origins of your faith. Never forget the foundations of your belief. Never forget who Jesus is in your life. And I promise you, no matter how many difficult times may come, you can face them with hope and encouragement because you know that the God who is the origin of your life will continue to work in you and through you now and forever. May God bless you. The Sabbath afternoon. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Amen. So before we end this um, afternoon worship, um, they have asked me to offer, sorry, we've run, to offer um, a short... Actually, I'm not prepared. I did not see this coming, that I would be the one singing this song. But they have requested me. So to give you a short background, um, if, if, any, if every one of you is asking, the inspiration to this song is really how the origins of our life, God, has been there all, our, all along. Whatever you may be may be facing in life, in cha the challenges, the suffering, the pain, the, the personal battles that you and the Lord knows. Just remember that if you may have been, if you're, you're, you're losing your way, just remember that God is always there to lead you back to him. times when I cannot feel you, Lord. So I ask, is it just me who's lost and confused? I have questions too many seemed unanswered. Your purpose for me have I lived? All my life I'm searching for the true way Tired, alone, and broken Help me find you today Fear, pain, and despair Have blinded my weary soul For far too long I've gone astray Then I Turn to your Lord for comfort. A light unto my feet, you have shown me.
We now come to the portion of our program where we just basically want to say thank you. And uh, two words that are really not enough. Many of us here have been uh, participants, worship leaders, coordinators of the Week of Prayer. And as I like to think, our goal for the Week of Prayer is to maximize the Marys who would sit at the feet of Jesus. But the Week of Prayer is not possible without the multitudes of Marthas who would exert their effort, their time, not sleep enough, sacrifice their energy and their talents for God's work. So again, thank you is too simple a phrase to express our gratitude for you and what you've done for God. And I believe with all my heart that the Lord is looking down on you and saying, even now, well done, good and faithful servant. From the bottom of our hearts, we'd like to thank you. And we'd like to share with you just uh, these, all these certificates will be sent out to you personally. We cannot give them all out one by one this afternoon. But we thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for what you've done for the Lord today. Can I, it, I think it's appropriate. Can we say, can we just give uh, a round of applause to all of the people who have sacrificed for the Lord? We praise all of you. We praise you all. And we, we thank you again for what you've done for the Lord. As I mentioned earlier, certificates are one thing, but what we look forward to is our reward in heaven. And your efforts are duly noted above. Today, we'd also like to give a special thank you to our speakers. And we'd like to invite the speakers that are here to please come forward. The speakers of our week of prayer that are here, many of them are quite busy. They're, they're not done serving, so they're not able to stay. But we have our few speakers, but I'd like to invite them to please come forward. And we'd like to appreciate them as well. Nahiyapa. Okay. Again, can we praise the Lord for the talents He has given these young men and women? They have blessed us with their gifts in speaking. Please come here. I will say a few words and then I will ask Carissa to, to read out the citations and I will assist in handing out. Can we invite Pastor Lani also to help assist us? in handing out the certificates. How many of you were blessed by the messages this past week? Amen. Praise the Lord. As uh, one of the advisors, I was the advisor to Thaddeus and Zaina. Zaina is not here. Um, I was very impressed, really, with, with the quality of work, not only with my, who I advise, but everyone else, of the messages they've shared. And if I can brag a little bit, uh, even many of our, those who are not theology, you preach better than pastors. So, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, my, I would like to thank you again for what you've done. And I would also like to challenge you. Um, don't stop preaching. Don't stop preaching. As I'm, I'm sure many of you in your preparation for your messages, you have a lot of content that you had to cut out that you cannot include, you wish you could include. Use those for sermons also. Uh, later down the road. I'm sure many more will be blessed by your work. So thank you once again and God be with you. Let me give the time to Carissa now. Adventist University of the Philippines Campus Youth Ministries gives this certificate of appreciation to the appreciation. So the following award is given to Tadeus Tien for his powerful and inspiring message as a speaker during the college Spiritual Emphasis Week of Adventist <laughs> Emphasis of the Adventist University of the Philippines for the first semester of the academic year 2022 and 2023 with the theme Origins Retracing Our Steps to Move Forward in Faith held on October 17 to 22 2022 given on the second 22nd of October 
2022 at the Philippine International Church, Adventist University of the Philippines, putting Kaoy Salang Cavite. Signed, Francis Ray M. Gayoba, advisor of the Campus Youth Ministries, Pastor Lani T. Estevez, Church Pastor, Philippine International Church, and Arceli Rosario, our president of the Adventist University of the Philippines. Next speaker. Okay, next spot, David Augustine. Honey Dogwe. Dirty Love for Mera. <laughs> Nino Año Nuevo. Jinta Buklin. Arnold Famini. Christopher, Abram Christopher Ann. We would also like to acknowledge uh, Martina Nicole Valencia and Nezer Vergara, who are the two speakers who are not here, and also Zainarik Tabilisma. So we will be forwarding their certificates as well to them. Thank you so much. One, one picture. Thank you. Thank you.